In this lesson, we'll cover the different asset classes and the financial instruments that trade in them. We'll go into detail describing the distinctions between major assets that trade in the money markets and in the capital markets, the construction of the stock market indexes, and we'll show you how to calculate the profit and loss for options and future contracts. The money market is a part of the debt market. The money market consists of very short-term, highly marketable debt securities. Many of the securities traded in the money markets trade in large denominations, so they are not always easily affordable for the everyday investor. U.S. Treasury bills, T-bills for short, are the most marketable instruments of all money market securities. This is because Treasury bills are the simplest form of money market securities. The U.S. government sells T-bills to the public to raise money. Investors buy T-bills from the government at a discounted price below their face value. When the T-bill matures, the investor receives a payment equal to the Treasury bill's face value. The difference between the purchase price and the face value is the investor's return on their investment. Treasury bills are issued with initial maturities of 4, 13, 26, and 52 weeks. T-bills can be purchased from the U.S. Treasury or in the secondary markets from a dealer of government securities. Treasury bills are highly liquid because they can easily be converted to cash and the transaction costs are low. T-bills sell for denominations as low as $100, although they are most commonly sold in $10,000 denominations. The income earned on T-bills is exempt from state and local taxes. However, they are not exempt from federal taxes. The image here is a listing of T-bills pulled from the Wall Street Journal. Instead of listing the price for each T-bill, it reports the yield based on those prices. The ask price is the price you would expect to pay to a dealer when purchasing a T-bill. The bid price is the price you would expect to receive if you were to sell the T-bill to a dealer. The bid price is a little lower than the ask price. The price difference between the bid price and the ask price is known as the bid-ask spread. The bid-ask spread is how the dealers make their profits. The bid and the ask yields are reported by using the bank discounted method. This means that the discount offered by the bank is annualized based on a 360-day year and is then reported as a percentage of par value. Take a look at the highlighted T-bill dated March 8, 2012. The maturity date is 245 days away and the yield in the ask column is 0.07%. This means that the dealer was selling the bill at a discount from par value of 0.07% times 245 divided by 360, equaling 0.0476%. Therefore, a bill with a $10,000 par value could be purchased for $9,995.24. The formula we use to get this number is listed here on the screen. On the bid yield of 0.085%, the dealer would have purchased the T-bill for $9,000. $994.22 and again you can see the formula here on the screen. Certificate of Deposits, also known as CDs. A Certificate of Deposit, CD for short, is a bank time deposit. CDs are not immediately available for withdrawal on demand. Investors deposit money in a Certificate of Deposit and the bank pays interest and principal only at the end of the fixed term of the CD. Early withdrawal of CDs over $100,000 is negotiable. Owners can also sell CDs in the secondary markets when they really need the money. Short-term certificate of deposits are highly marketable, however, the market does get tougher for CDs that have a maturity greater than three months. CDs are bank deposits, so they are covered by the FDIC and are insured in the event of a bank insolvency. Commercial paper, sometimes referred to as CP, are unsecured debt notes issued by large well-known corporations directly to the public. Commercial paper is sometimes backed by a bank line of credit giving the borrower access to funds to pay off the commercial paper at the time of maturity. Commercial paper is usually issued in denominations multiples of $100,000 with maturities of less than two months. However, the maturities can range of up to 270 days. Longer maturities are required by the SEC, so they're rarely ever used. Commercial paper is considered to be a fairly low-risk investment. Commercial paper is quite liquid and trades in an active secondary market. Most issues are rated on the riskiness by at least one agency such as Standard & Poor's. Commercial paper yields are mostly dependent on their time and maturity and the issuing company's credit rating. 
Although commercial paper is usually issued by non-financial firms, there was a recent increase in asset-backed commercial paper being issued by financial firms such as banks. The financial institutions were usually issuing commercial paper to raise funds to invest in other assets. The assets purchased with the money raised back the commercial paper, hence the phrase asset back. A banker's acceptance is a short-term debt instrument. A banker's acceptance usually starts as an order to a bank from a customer to pay a specified sum of money to another party at some time or point in the future, usually within six months. If the bank endorses or accepts the order, it then assumes responsibility for the payment, allowing the customer to use the bank's credit to back the promise of the future payment. At this point, the banker's acceptance becomes a security that is actively traded in the secondary markets. Banker's acceptance are very safe investments since traders are substituting their own credit with the credit of the backing bank. Banker's acceptance are frequently used in foreign trade where the credit worthiness of one trader is uncertain to the other trading party. Banker's acceptance sell at a discount from par value allowing investors to earn a return. A euro dollar is a dollar denominated deposit made in a foreign branch of an American bank. Banks locate their branches outside of the United States to avoid regulation by the Federal Reserve Board. Although they are called euro dollars, they do not need to be deposited in the European banks. Most euro dollar deposits are large, and most euro dollar deposits are time deposits with maturities normally less than six months. One variation of the euro dollar time deposit is a euro dollar certificate of deposit. A euro dollar CD is an American bank CD except it is made in a non-US branch, usually in London. Holders of euro dollar CDs are able to sell the asset before maturity if they need the money. Euro dollar CDs are considered to be riskier than domestic CDs, however they also offer a higher return. Firms also sometimes issue euro dollar bonds outside of the United States. Euro dollar bonds are dollar denominated bonds sold outside the US. Repurchase agreements, also known as repos or RPs, are a form of short-term borrowing where a dealer sells government securities with the promise to repurchase them back the next day at a slightly higher price than what they sold for. Thus, the dealer is simply taking out a one-day loan using the security as collateral. Broker's call. A broker's call is when a broker borrows funds from a bank to make margin loans to investors. The broker agrees to repay the loan immediately on call when the bank requests. The rate paid on broker's calls is usually about one percentage point higher than the rate on short-term T-bills. Federal funds. Federal funds are funds in the accounts of commercial banks deposited at the Federal Reserve. Banks maintain deposits at the Federal Reserve Bank just as most people maintain deposits at regular banks. Member banks of the Federal Reserve are required to maintain reserves of a minimum balance in an account at the Federal Reserve. The amount that each member bank is required to maintain is dependent on the total deposits by the bank's customers. At times, many banks will have more funds deposited at the Federal Reserve than what is required. Other banks may have a shortage of federal funds deposited with the Fed. In order to maintain the minimum required, they will borrow funds from banks that have a surplus. When banks borrow these funds, they must pay an interest rate. The interest rate they pay is known as the federal funds rate. Originally, the federal funds market came to be as a means for banks to transfer balances to meet the reserve requirements set by the Fed. Today, the federal funds market has evolved in a way that many banks rely on the federal funds market as one of their sources of funding. The Fed funds rate is simply the interest rate on very short-term loans made among financial institutions. Although most investors cannot trade the federal funds market, the Fed funds rate is a gauge of monetary policy. The LIBOR market. The London Interbank Offer Rate, known as the LIBOR rate, is the rate at which large banks in London lend money amongst each other. The LIBOR rate is the primary short-term interest rate quoted in the European money market and is used as a reference rate for a large range of financial transactions. For example, a company may borrow at a rate stated as LIBOR plus 3%.
Therefore, if the LIBOR rate was 4%, then the company would be borrowing funds at a 7% interest rate. The LIBOR rate is a widely used statistic among investors just as the Fed funds rate is. The LIBOR rate is often tied to currencies other than the U.S. dollar, such as the British pound, euro, and the yen. Yields on money market instruments. Almost all money market instruments are low risk, but they are not risk free. Money market instruments offer yields greater than default risk provided by T-bills due to their greater relative riskiness. Investors who require liquidity will often accept lower interest rates so that their investments can quickly be converted to cash.